get right. Um, actually, the second part of the message began last Sunday night on the old is better. And when you're in Revelation chapter 13, you are in the period in the Bible known as the Great Tribulation. Everything from chapter 4, verse 1, to chapter 19, verse 11, is in a period called the Tribulation period. Three and a half years called the Great tribulation period, a Jewish time called Jacob's Trouble in the Old Testament in which God turns the clock back on and is dealing with Jews. The clock is off right now and the door is wide open to Gentiles and Gentiles are being saved by the millions all over this world every day. There are Jews being saved right now but mostly Gentile. When God turns back to his people, earthly people, uh, it's going to be a different story. So tonight, you're going to look at a time here when the Antichrist will rule the world. Anti. What's anti sound like? Antifreeze? Like keep opposite from free, keep something from freezing? Antichrist. Opposite of Christ. Against Christ. Just like Jesus was God in the flesh, the Antichrist is the devil in the flesh. Just like Jesus uh, lived his life for 30 years as a, as a perfect person, and then the Spirit of God came on him when he was 30. The Spirit of hell is going to come out of the pit of Judas Iscariot and come on the Antichrist at 30. And he'll have a three and a half year ministry in which he will require everyone to have a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. Not on. In. And that's very significant in the light of what we are seeing happen today. Look at Revelation 13 and verse number... Um, uh, 11, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He come out of the earth. That means there's things under your feet in an underworld, the underworld, they call it. He comes out of the earth. They're, they're all, all these scientists have got them uh, telescopes pointing to outer space trying to find out where them aliens, they ain't coming from up there. They coming from down there. Them things are demonic coming from down there. They have all the characteristics of demons. The smell, the atmosphere, the way they talk, everything. Now look at verse number 11 again. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. Remember, the two best words for understanding your Bible are like and as. Them two words, like and as. When you see him say as, he's teaching you something. Like, you say, well, you understand this? No. We understand that? Yeah. Well, that is like that. The Lord does that all the time. The kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. And he puts it so you understand it. Like a, as a dragon. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. That's the Antichrist, whose deadly wound was healed. There's the bad right eye from Zechariah chapter 11. That's why all the movie stars, rock singers, little, uh, uh, that little girl done that concert of our where all them people got killed, that little uh, Ariana, Adriana, whatever her name is, Ariana, whatever her name is, uh, got, they all keep their hair over that eye, over that one eye like that, uh, a picture of the one eye. The all-seeing eye that the Antichrist will have. Deadly wound healed. Verse 13. Notice 13, 13. Watch out for the 13s. He doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now that's going to make them think he's God. So they say, only God could do that. Wrong. The devil will have power to work miracles. And the Bible said in verse 14, He deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. How? By the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Say unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life under the image of the beast. That's, there's a lot of debate about that. I, I, I know of all kinds of different explanations for it. That the image of the beast should both speak. Some of them say that's satellite TV, image in the sky, or actual, actual statue that starts talking. I don't know. But it speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast, image of the beast should be killed. Here he goes, 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, 
free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead and that no man might buy or sell. Can't get on the internet, can't get a job, can't buy groceries, can't uh, check your phone, can't get the weather, can't get a job, can't cash a check, can't draw social security, buy or sell, except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Now, tonight I'm going to let you hear just a little, about three minutes of news reports about that's just been on recently on the news of them talking about a new world order. President Bush the, the first, the daddy, said it, he said, we have an opportunity right now to set the world in a new order. It's coming. It's coming at us 90 miles an hour. I hope and pray the Lord comes and gets us out of here before it gets really, really bad because bad things are going to happen in this country and around the world. Bad, really bad. So tonight, uh, if you got that ready for us, uh, uh, Noah, go ahead and make sure you've got plenty of volume, and I'm just going to sit down, and I want you to listen to these news reports uh, for just about two or three minutes. We have a real chance at this oh. new world order. An order, a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea, a new world order, a world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think, only once, and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international order. The beginning, order. the beginning of a new international order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. We are now facing a common challenge, and the challenge is how to build a world order for the first time in history on a global basis. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order. That's a bunch of them, but there's a bunch more left. And it's easy for you to see that the world is moving fast. Now, I'm going to say something here that some of you may not like. And I know some of my friends or enemies on the internet will really take a fit when I say this. But the reason, the reason the news media, the liberal left wingers, the Democrats are attacking uh, the pres President Trump and all that they're trying to do is because they are, they are not uh, fans of a new world order and they're trying to somewhat to keep America as an independent nation. 
I'm not, I'm not really a Donald Trump fan. I'm not. But, but they, anything, anybody they hate that much is bound to be trying to move something in the right direction. Stuff me and you can't even see or know. So you, you listen to me tonight. This, when the world, when the whole world attacks and fights something that much, you can be sure that something's trying to move the right way and they're moving the wrong way. I'm not saying I'm, I'm a fan of Donald Trump. I don't know. He, he, he does some crazy stuff. He does some stuff that's ridiculous. He, he's, he's probably he's full of the devil, but he ain't as full of the devil as that other crowd is. Amen? And I'm not saying I agree with everything he does, but they, my, my cousin, I talked to her last night in West Virginia, Linda Gale, y'all, some of y'all know, all my cousins in West Virginia, her husband, Monk, they have a coal mining business. They are right in the middle of coal country. My uncle, uh, he, he has, my cousin's husband has uh, over 100 dump trucks, and uh, they lease art and trucking, and they move coal. And I said, uh, is the coal business doing better? She said, yeah, it's doing a lot better. She said, since Donald Trump took office, uh, more coal mines have opened up. It's been, but they're stopping every, they're, they're blocking every single thing that they try to do. Now, the reason they're doing this, they're saying, they're saying that, um, well, we've got to have clean air. And we've got to have clean air. We've got to have clean air. And coal is dirty. That's not really the truth. All of this global stuff, all of this EPA stuff, all of these these restrictions they're putting on people of building and codes and stuff here in this country, all of that stuff is an attempt to get us all into a global government. Here's what they're trying to do. You want it in a nutshell? They're trying to bring America down and raise all the other countries up and level it to try to have everybody as a one world government. And that's where it's headed. One world religion. I, I could tell you thing after thing that. Rick Warren, the pastor of that Saddleback Church out in California. All the new mega church emerging movement that's coming out now. The, the mega churches where, you know, they're, they're saying uh, that people like me and you are mean and ugly because we preach on sin and that we should be concerned about the world problems of poverty and, and racism and stuff like that. Now, we are concerned about poverty and racism, but that is not our main job in this world. Our main job in this world is not to feed poor people. We do it, and I believe in it. Our main job in this world is to get people saved and turn them to the Lord Jesus Christ and keep them out of hell when they die. That's the church's mission. But they're, they're shifting the church's mission tonight over in uh, another direction. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you some stuff here tonight. At the risk of being just a little tedious, I don't usually do this, but I want you to listen to me. Quote, the global elite have never been closer to their goal of a united world thanks to a series of interlocking treaties and international agreements, that's agreements with other countries that the Obama administration made in the last few years uh, without even asking us to get a chance to our say on it. The world is, planet is becoming globalized and centralized, but most people don't seem alarmed at this at all. We've seen some of the biggest steps toward a one-world government, a one-world economy, and a one-world religion that we have ever witnessed. But these events have sparked very little public discussion. So please, let's share this with as many people as you can. We need to wake up, it's, the article said. The United Nations has launched a new universal agenda for humanity. These are not my words. They come directly out of the core document of this new agenda. When the Pope traveled to New York City to give that address that kicked this conference off, giving his considerable endorsement to this new plan, the vir virtually every nation on the planet willingly signed up for the 17 goals that are included in this plan, but the stunning turn of events made very few international headlines. The United Nations promises that if we all work together, we can turn our planet into some kind of utopia where everything's wonderful and all men get along each other and love each other and there's no war or famine. But the truth is that all this talk about unity marks a very insidious agenda. The following comes from the recent uh, piece of a new book called The Babylon Code. Quote, the, new in, the UN is not asking permission 
but issuing a command that the entire planet commit to some 17 sustainable development goals and 169 sustainable development targets designed to radically transform our world by the year 2030. That's uh, 12 and a half years from now. 2030. And ladies and gentlemen, the UN 2030 plan promoted by the Pope will advance the Agenda 21 on steroids. Through a controlled media, the mass population will be told that this is all about saving the environment and ending poverty. But this is not the true agenda of Agenda 21. The true agenda of Agenda 21 is to establish a global government, global economic system, global religion. Are you listening to me? That means all this junk they get on the news, all this Al Gore baloney about the, the planet and the environment, and we got to get clean air and clean coal. They don't care about the clean air. It's an attempt to push us toward a one world global government. That's what's coming. And anybody like me, you know what they would call me? They call me a conspiracy theorist. And the truth is tonight, there is a conspiracy. Uh, but the, the chief conspirator is the devil. And the devil's whipping all this together. The people involved in this conspiracy don't even know they're in it, a lot of them. There might be some. I mean, you get that there at the Bilderbergers and the CFR. That's the Council of Foreign Relations. And them big places, the 13 people that run the world and all that stuff. I don't really know how much power all them people got. But I know one thing. There's somebody calling the shot somewhere. You can count on that. And, buddy, there's, there's decisions being made in high places tonight that's going to change the future of our kids and our grandkids if God's people don't get back to God and pray. Uh, you know, the, the devil, you say the devil's conspirator? That's right. Now, somebody asked me, they said, Brother Danny, the devil know the Bible? Yes. The devil know the Bible's true? Yes. They said, well, how come if the devil knows the Bible's true and he can read the book of Revelation that he don't see in there where he's going to get thrown like a fire and change his plans and mess it all up? And the answer is this, the devil is so crooked, there's no truth in him, the Bible says, so somehow or another he still thinks he can win this thing. I believe the devil still believes, even after he gets off the chain gang a thousand years, he's going to gather them all together and try to throw God off his throne. I mean, I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I am so glad that I'm a Christian tonight. I am so glad that I can stand here tonight with the Word of God Almighty and say, hang in there, child of God. Don't give up. Don't back up. Don't give up. Thank God put her pedal to the metal, brother. And Let's just get on fire for God and live for the Lord. I'm going to break the other thing I'll say. And I'll tell you what, brother. Hallelujah. Let's get the job done God's called us to do. You know what? The world's against They told old, uh, I think old Martin Luther one time, they said, the world's against you. And he said, well, I'm against it. Other what people told me. They said, Danny, don't you know the whole world's against you? Yeah, and I'm against it. And God pity the preacher that ain't. I'm telling you tonight, they, we are seeing a government perform or, or get ready to take over. Every, listen to me, we are steamrolling toward a one world government, a one world economy, and a one world religion. There'll be a few bumps along the way. There'll be a planet that will experience an extreme amount of chaos before we actually get there, and I believe that. Every major crisis will be used as an excuse to advance this agenda. Virtually every solution that the elite will offer us involves more globalization and more centralization. We will be told that all our problems will be solved if we'll just all come together in unity. For some, the goal of the united planet, where we're all working together for good, to eradicate things like poverty, war, and disease, makes all the sense in the world. Because who would be against eradicating poverty and the disease? Nobody. But they're not, that's not the end goal. The end goal is to get everybody together, mindless, submitting to a one world leader. And you know who stands in the way of that? Christian people. <laughs> Christian people. It's always Christians. It's all, you know who the abortion crowd don't like? Christians. You know who the gay crowd don't like? 
Christians. Uh, you know who uh, the Russians don't like? Christians. You know who the Democrats don't like? Christians. The whole world turns against Christians. We are in their way. But guess what? We will be taken out of their way. Thank God. Sooner the better. I think, buddy, when, it, when the Lord comes, he's going to say, all right, let's go. Bam! We'll leave this world with a shout. You talk about chaos. Personally, I, I ain't got no Bible to back this up. This is my opinion, okay? I'm going to tell you when it's just my opinion. I believe that there's going to be a tremendous big tragic event before the rapture. That's, I just think it. I think that there, there, there'll be something terrible, something that will make 9-11 look like a picnic. I don't bad. Some kind of attack, some kind of uh, explosion. I don't want it. I don't wish that on nobody. But I think it's going to happen. And I know it is after the rapture. But before the Lord comes, I think there's going to be a tragedy. And every tragedy will be used by the media as a way to take away your liberties. Every time there's a tragedy, well, you've got to give up this liberty. In order, every time there's a shooting, every time there's a school, you know, they're one them guns. They want them to, listen, people, if they passed a law tonight that every law-abiding citizen had to go uptown and turn their gun in tomorrow, you know who would turn their guns in? Law-abiding citizens. You know how much crime that's going to stop? None. Matter of fact, there'd be more. I got an old redneck neighbor that lives about halfway down Hoppy Tom, and he's got a sign out in his yard about, he's an old redneck guy, and he's got a sign in his yard that said, if you are found here tonight, you will be found here tomorrow morning. And <laughs> right out the road, every day when I run, I walk by and I see a sign. And I mean, here, and it's got a picture of a pistol like that right there on it. Listen, if they made, if they made a law that said everybody's got to give them their guns, and we did, that's just going to make us more vulnerable to more crime. What kind of a nut? And, and, and every time there's a shooting, what do they say on, on the news? We need stronger gun laws. We need gun laws. We need gun laws. We need gun laws. We need gun laws. Now listen, I don't think crazy old people, people ought to get be able to buy guns. I, I'm okay with a background check. I think that's good. Uh, I'm, I'm not against sensible laws like that. But that is not their agenda. Their agenda is to disarm the public. That's their agenda. I'm telling you tonight, that every tragedy that happens, they'll jump right on it. When them congressmen got shot up there the other day, up, up in Washington, D.C., it wasn't 10 minutes, so here they come on the news. We've got to do something about guns. We've got to do something about guns. Now, you honestly think now that all the drug dealers and all the crooks and all the criminals are going to turn their guns in if you pass the law? And if they did, there's people making them by the millions right now. They could get more and more and more. You ain't going to get rid of guns. You ain't going to, the only way, only people you can get guns from, people that wasn't going to use them, no way. Shoot nobody. I'm telling you tonight, every tragedy that happens will be used as an excuse to take away your rights and to charge you more taxes and to take away uh, any kind of, you notice how farms are under attack? They don't want nobody being farmers anymore. You notice how they want everybody to live in cities and nobody live out in the country? You notice how the big corporations are just sucking in everything? The little man out in the country, the, the family-owned store, the family-owned market, the family-owned. They hate that about America. They hate free enterprise. They hate the little man out here in the middle of the country that can start him a business and make him some money and buy him some land. They hate that. They want to put everybody on the same level because they believe if they do that, they'll stop wars. I, somebody asked me one time, they said, well, don't you believe in taking from the rich and giving to the poor? I said, no, that's the, Jesus said the poor you'll always have with you. And I'm going to tell you something. And I ain't even start on my outline tonight. I may not even get to it, but I'm just, I'm just giving you a little talk here tonight before I get started preaching. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, you know what? They, if, you took, if you took everybody in America and took all the money and made everybody turn their money in and evenly distributed all the money where everybody had the same amount, in six months, they'd be rich people and poor people again. Right? 
because they know how to work and make money and do stuff, and they some of them don't, and they and some of them lose it, and some of them steal it, and some of them, it's going to get right back the same mess again. They're crying, they're trying to create a utopia without God, and you cannot. There'll be no peace on this earth till the Prince of Peace comes. And one day, thank God, He's coming. Amen. The ultimate goal for the entire world is to become a single market with uniform laws, rules, and regulation. That's why they don't like President putting sanctions on these countries and fighting with China and saying, no, don't build the wall of Mexico. Don't build the wall. Uh, don't build the wall. Uh, we should, we, it's mean to shut people out. There, there is no congressman there is no senator, the president, and I don't know anybody that's against people coming from other countries to America. That's what they try to, they try to paint you and say, oh, you're mean to people. You know, we just don't want criminals and crooks and people going to blow us all to smithereens coming. But they can't get that. Oh, you're mean. Oh, you're full of the devil. Amen. That's right, Brother Danny. Hey, the ultimate goal <laughs> is to make a single market with uniform rules and regulation. But as we merge our economy with the rest of the globe, listen to that, we're going to merge our economy with the rest of the globe. That's why they don't want to teach how great America is in college. That's why they don't like the American flag. They don't like American elitism. They say we shouldn't put America up here. Lord, have mercy, people. We ought to be proud to be an American. They ought to fire any basketball player or football player that refuses to honor the flag of this country. Look, you say, well, we have our rights. You sure do. You can take it out there and spit on it if you want to on your own. But if we're paying you and, the, and you work for the, uh, the states and you work for the government and you work for the country and you're making your money off the rest of us, you ought to honor our country and our flag. Amen? Fire them low-down scoundrels. As we merge our economy with the rest of the globe, the United States has been losing tens of thousands of businesses and millions of jobs as the monolithic corporations that now dominate our economy shift production where labor is much cheaper. My sister is the nurse, Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen, some of the finest high-end, high-dollar furniture, you know, I mean, it's some fancy stuff, big shot stuff. And I said, they, closed, they had 14 plants in the, in, on the East Coast, and now they got three. Three left, and we don't know the future of them. And they're going to Mexico. My brother-in-law goes to the Honduras. Uh, every week, that's where all of it's being made now. We ship it over there where they ain't got no laws and EPA rules and you can spill stuff and no, no stuff like it and, and ship it back cheaper than we can make it here. And I said, Debbie, why do they do that? And she said, Danny, think about it. Now, here's what's wrong with our country. And I'm going to close. I ain't going to talk long now. Here's what's wrong with our country. She said, here we have to pay a man $16 an hour. We have to pay his insurance if he spills something on that, we have to call the EPA in. They have to make sure everything's clean. If he gets cut, it costs us, you know, $100,000 for surgery. If, if he flirts with a woman, there, there can be a, a uh, suit, sexual harassment. She said the insurance, the restrictions are so high, we can send it to Mexico and pay one man $75 a month to do what that man does. There's what's killing America. They pass so many stupid laws. They said, well, you need to protect them. It's all a point. They're trying to break us, people. They're trying to break us. There's so many laws now. They said the man that built Lowe's, uh, the, what do you call Lowe's hardware store? Slows, that's what I call it. If you go in there, you better not be in a hurry. 
It's a slow, uh, I call them slows. <laughs> but yeah, we went over and got that concrete the other day. I thought, how long does it take to buy 10 bags of concrete? Give me your phone number and everything. I will give you, a woman said, what's your phone number? I said, no, your business. Not it. Uh, I, I said, anyway, the man who started slows way back 30 years ago, one, you know, they interviewed him. And they said, what, what if you were starting a business now? He said, if I was in business now, I couldn't start that business. He said, there's so many restrictions now, I couldn't and wouldn't start that business today. There's, that's the pressure from the UN coming down to shut our country off, to make it, bring the other countries up, take ours down. Bring the other country. You know why they want all them illegal immigrants to come over here? Because they all vote Democrat. And they don't have to be legal. Win elections that way. It ain't because they care about the poor. Lord, I know this might be on the internet and I'll get cussed and called everything in the world. But it sure does feel good to get to stand up and just tell the truth. We better do it while we can. May not have this change much longer. I'm telling you, we're in a war, people. We're in a war. Go soul winning. Get in a bus ministry. Get somebody to God while it's still okay and we're still allowed to. Before the time comes when they shut us down. Amen. We're also seeing some stunning moves in the direction of a one world religion. In recent years, you may have noticed it has become very trendy. You notice how all these people talk, internet talk. I can't stand to hear preachers talk internet. Their favorite words are not Bible words, they're internet words. Come on out and let's connect. Shut up. I can't stand to hear somebody come out. Let's connect. You mean, you mean less fellowship in the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? Uh, some preachers, all they talk about is inter- their, their church ought to be called the first Baptist of Internet, the first Internet church in town. They live on the Internet, they preach off the Internet, they read off the Internet, and they're, they're, they're poisoned by the Internet. Let's connect your foot. I don't know who you're connected to. But anyway, it says... Their agenda to say that all religions are just different paths to the same God. In fact, many prominent religious leaders are now openly proclaiming that the two biggest faiths on the entire planet, Christian and Islam, worship the same deity. Pope Francis. Are you ready for this? The following is how he began his speech at St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan, New York. Quote, I would like to express two sentiments for my Muslim brothers and sisters. First, my greetings as they celebrate the Feast of Sacrifice. I would have wished my greeting to be warmer. My sentiments of closeness, my sentiments of closeness in the face of tragedy, the tragedy they suffered in Mecca, In this moment, I give assurance of my prayers. I unite myself with you all, a prayer to Almighty God, all merciful. The reason he chose those words, the Almighty God, all merciful, you may not know this, but in Islam, Allah is known as the all merciful one. And you see the Pope, slick as a a baby's bottom, brother, Sliding that right in there saying, the all-merciful one. We're, you're okay. We're okay with you, you guys. We're all on the same page, underhanded. One, no, we're not. We're not we, might, we might, listen, brother. Here's what he said. I then greet and cordially thank you all, clear, dear friends, beginning, belonging to other religious traditions, first of all, the Muslims. Why in the world is the whole world bowing down to Muslims all of a sudden? Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird, people? Well, y'all let me preach. Uh, uh, they, 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 they come on. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. Hey, it's the Muslims who worship the one God. I mean, I want you to back me up a good night. Living and merciful and call upon him in prayer and all of you. 
I really appreciate your presence. In it, I see a tangible sign of the will to grow in mutual esteem and cooperation for the common good of humanity. That's just as slick politician talk as you've ever heard in your life. Here's what that means. Let's all get together and love each other and forget our differences, and I'm the boss, the Pope. That's what that means. Now, I'm going to give you a bunch of quotes here the rest of the summer on this emergent church stuff, and I'm going to tell you what they said, then I'm going to tell you in plain hick language that you can understand. What he means is, let's all get together, and it don't really matter what you believe. Amen? We're headed that way. God help us. Here's my advice to you. Raise your family right. Study the Bible. Pray. Get in the bus ministry, people. Do it while you can. Do it while you can. Let's stand by our heads for prayer.